What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about a uh, simple DIY project, um, how to install a, a, a Wi-Fi dimmer switch. Uh, these are becoming more and more popular. You can use them with your, your home automation system, um, incorporate them into your Alexa or Google home speakers and uh, just all around uh, nice feature to have in a house to control the lighting. There's a couple different types of Wi-Fi switches. There's, there's a switch that uh, you have to purchase a separate hub with. In this case, we have a switch that has the Wi-Fi hub built in and that's, that's the one from CE Smart that we're gonna install today. So again, a simple job, DIY, with simple household tools that, that most homeowners have in their toolbox. A flat blade screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, number one Robertson, a decent pair of wire strippers, needle nose pliers, what I call nail cutters, a bull nose plier, and a straightforward tester to test the circuit, whether it has power or not. Now, of course, you can use power tools, impact drill with a number one Robertson bit, but uh, we're trying to do this with straightforward hand tools, just to so, show how simple the install is. Okay, so step one, we're gonna remove the plate from your uh, from your light switch. I should mention that uh, first of all, you wanna go down to your electrical panel and uh, make sure you switch off the appropriate breaker to, uh, to kill the power to this switch. So as mentioned, you're gonna turn the power off of this project and on your panel, uh, you'll have a breaker uh, if they're properly labeled, uh, mine is labeled front area of the house, main floor lights, and we're going to simply switch that breaker to off. Okay, next step, you're going to take your number one Robertson screwdriver, and you're going to remove the, the switch from the, the, wall, the wall box. Be careful here. Um, there is a potential. You, get, you have uh, wires wrapped around... Uh, Live wires wrapped around screws here, so there's a potential if this switch were to slide that you can arc against the box, but as mentioned previously, uh, you're going to go check and make sure the breaker is, is switched off. So back the screws out and just carefully pull the switch out of the wall box. So we've purposely left the power on here to um, help us identify which wire is considered the power wire or the load wire. Uh, that is carrying power from the breaker in your panel. So in a separate part of the video, I go through the tools that you'll, you'll need to, to do this type of project. This is a straightforward, uh, simple power tester to test for 120 volts. So we're gonna simply go to each of the two screws on the switch and test uh, which one has has power. So we'll go with the first one here. And we've got nothing. And we'll go with the second one. And you can see that it's that's our power wire bringing power from the panel. So we're going to mark this wire. So remember which one it is. I'm just going to wrap a piece of tape around it. Just be careful here because there we go. The wire marked, as you can see here, with the green tape. We're going to double check that we've got our power correctly shut off at the breaker. And as you can see, there's no power indication at either terminal. So now we're going to simply take our number one Robertson and we're going to remove these two, loosen these two screws and remove the, uh, the conductor from the switch. This particular brand of switch, the CE Smart, requires a neutral wire to be powered up and it helps uh, the Wi-Fi uh, hub connection. So um, you'll need to have uh, a small chunk of, of the neutral wire and you'll need to pull the pigtail neutral wires out of your electrical box. And uh, we're, we're gonna basically connect these together to create our little pigtail to add to the switch. This part can be a little tricky, uh, but what I like to do is start by untwisting the existing pigtailed neutral wires so that we end up 
with just, if we separate them, we end up with, uh, with two straight neutrals. So you notice you have about an inch stripped off of each of the neutral conductors. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our bullnose plier and we're going to properly twist all three neutral connectors together. So you have all your connectors lined up together and you get a firm grip with one hand and you take your plier and you begin to twist them all together. Make sure you hold it firmly and a few turns of this style of plier and they really twist together nicely. So since we've added a conductor here, the original moret that they'd used to cover this up is probably not big enough. So we're gonna to wanna to replace that with a proper size moret for three conductors. So we have our moret that's um, one size up from what was there previously. We're gonna wind that onto our newly pigtailed neutral wire, tighten it down. And there we have a pigtail ready to hook into our new switch. Okay, so we took our newly pigtailed neutral wire and we tucked it back into the box in the wall, as you can see here, as far back as we could. So we're left with our three wires that we're gonna to connect to our smart switch. So here we have our our hot wire that we marked from uh, with green tape from the panel. We have our load wire going to our fixture. And we have our neutral wire that we've added in as a pigtail uh, for our switch. This particular smart switch has also has a ground screw. Um, in, in my case, the ground wires are, are short and fastened to the ground screws in the box. This switch doesn't need the ground to operate and by screwing the switch into the box with the two fasteners, it, it effectively um, creates a, a grounded switch. Be sure to check your local building code as some switches do require that you use this, this grounding screw. In my case, in, in, in our area, the code uh, grounds outlets, not the switches. But as mentioned before, it is grounded by screwing it into the gang box itself which is grounded from uh, back to the panel. Uh, so just be sure to check that just for, uh, for safety's sake and, and to make sure you follow code. Now we're gonna make our connections. We've got our hot wire into the hot terminal. Make sure these are good and tight. Next, we're gonna grab our load wire that goes to our fixture, pop that in. Fasten that down. And finally, we'll flip our switch over and we're gonna install our newly added neutral wire. Make sure the conductor stays all the way in as you're tightening down your fasteners. There we go. All right, we're just about wrapped up here. Uh, as you're um, putting your switch back into the gang box here, don't be afraid to neatly tuck your conductors. Don't just jam it in there. Make sure things are, are going in nice and smooth. Don't be afraid to tuck everything towards the back of the box. You can fit this, this switch. So now we're gonna line up our screws and get this uh, installed back into the gang box. Now that you got your switch mounted, we're gonna put on the, uh, the trim ring here. This particular uh, smart switch has a screwless trim plate and it simply snaps over the switch, just like so. All right, we've uh, gone and switched our uh, breaker back on at the panel, so we now have power back to the switch. Um, these smart switches, the majority of them have a extra little switch on the bottom here, so you're gonna wanna flip that switch to the on position and what you're gonna see is a rapidly flashing blue light. And what that tells you is that the switch is connected properly to power and it's actually ready to be programmed and connected to the app. So guys, at this point, you're back to having a regularly functioning dimmer switch, even without the smart switch capabilities. And uh, I'll just show you here that when you've got full control of our fixture, 
Okay guys, uh, that pretty much wraps up uh, this video. Um, but hopefully that helps you understand uh, the DIY of, of installing the CE smart switch. I think these are available uh, through Costco, at least they are in my area. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward. Take your time. Um, hopefully the video helps you uh, understand what's needed to do this. Um, if you uh, enjoyed what you see, uh, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to have similar content to this plus a lot of other DIY stuff uh, coming up in the future. Thanks for watching and we'll uh, catch you in the next one.